Hey everybody, Matt Stopa here again, and this is going to be a video on monkey patching. I had to take a little bit of a break from all the videos I've been doing on uh, just like the regular Ruby enumerable methods. So, monkey patching, if you are not familiar with it, it's a very core part of Ruby and Ruby on Rails, really. A lot of things that are done in Ruby on Rails just wouldn't be possible without it. So I'm going to give you just a simple example here. Um, so let's let's start off by talking a little bit about what it is. Uh, a monkey patching or monkey patching is when you add methods basically at runtime to classes that already exist. So let's just say you know in Ruby first of all there's a two string on every object. Every object has a two string because it inherits from the object class but well, let's just say we're like well we always it would be nice to have a method that could print the two string output with something else around it so like pretty two string output or something like that so here's how we would do that so I have my class here so we'll say class object end and let me go to the end of the line Oops, yep. And so we say class object and then def pretty print to s. That's a much longer line than it needs to be, but it doesn't really matter too much. So, whoopsie. I have not used vim in a while. So, all we have to do here is say to string and we'll stick this with in an interpolated string so we'll say 2s and I guess what we'll, what we'll add this is actually sometimes pretty helpful if you have like I don't know you're in debugging debugging logs or something and you just want to be able to see uh, some output that's obvious to you know where this thing is because uh, you know otherwise you could just be jumbled in a whole bunch of output that's there so I, sometimes I end up adding these longer strings so what you can see, what you can do is say okay so uh, dog dot uh, or yeah I mean it doesn't really matter what you use you could use an int, a string really anything that has a two string on it which is pretty much everything it's not always something useful but in this case it is so we'll say dog dot pretty pretty print to s okay so let's see what we get here ruby monkey patch dot rb oh, of course we didn't actually do anything so we'll say puts so we'll print this to the string to the stream because otherwise all we were doing is just returning it which doesn't do anything there it is so let's go back to the code and I'll kinda of explain again what happened basically we were able to patch on a new method onto an already existing class so think about kinda of like the power that that provides you that means that Anytime that you have a class that exists already, you can, you know, if you're like, man, I really wish it could do X or I really wish it could do Y, well, you know what? It can. Uh, a good example is like date time. If you don't like the format of date time, well, no big deal. You know, you can say, I need a specific date time format. I mean, there's already good methods for that, but if you just had something very esoteric uh, that you need throughout your project, it's very simple to do. So, like, you know, typically time dot now is what you would use to get the current time right um, but and that's you know call two string on that now it actually makes it a string but you know let's actually let me that brings up a good point let me exit out of here and just show you exactly what, how that works so we did that to the object class right and now let's do it to date time dot now dot pretty print and run Ruby oopsie that's right sorry about that I should have just done time dot now but I wanted to get fancy 
Sorry about that. So we'll go back down the time. I am just failed today. There we go. Okay, so you can see that, you know, it's now printed out our output exactly the way we wanted. And that's all because we've patched this method onto the object class. So if we just, I mean, you could just stick it on the time class if you wanted. If you just wanted to print that one thing, or you just wanted that one method on time, you can do that too. Uh, you can stick, you can literally stick it on any class, and that's kind of you know one of the big benefits over something like Java, where your only real option is to use composition to where you you encapsulate the other class inside yours. You know, you end up having to create this other wrapper class essentially to get this functionality. I mean, there's some other patterns that you know you could do these things with, but it, the the beauty and the simplicity of something like that is tremendous. Now, that being said, here's a warning. <laughs> Monkey patching can definitely be abused, and when it is, it can make your project a complete disaster because you can end up monkey patching all sorts of things on the classes and it's not obvious at all where things have where these things have been added. Uh think about like a a gem or just some external library that you use if it's just tacking on all these methods onto your object, I mean, it's polluting the object for one thing, but more than that, it's it's going to be impossible. It's like, well, is this part of Ruby <laughs> or is this part of Rails or some other framework or what part, what gem is this even a part of? And, I mean, I've definitely had some things where I've spent a couple hours tracking things down. Uh, so those are just some things to keep in mind, you know, like with, uh, you know, with power comes responsibility, and that's no nothing is more fitting for Ruby and monkey patching than that statement. So that's it, and hopefully that kind of gets the basic idea across. Okay.